So for Foucault, disciplinary societies emerged in the 18th and 19th centuries and reached their height at the outset of the 20th century. Deleuze, writing at the tail end of the 20th century, thinks that new forces are knocking at the door that are in the process of replacing disciplinary societies. And these new forces are ones that instead of disciplining, control, hence societies of control. And so one thing to note here is that control here, because Deleuze is writing in French, means control in the way that we use it in English, but it also has resonances of checkpoints. Um, and so if you're going through passport control, for instance, that's one way that we use control in this sense in English, but it's a lot more common in French. And so there's a sense of the control as something that regulates our movements through space, but in a way that's pretty different from discipline. And so let's think about what it means to have a life that is organized around this idea of control. The society of control, as Deleuze describes it, instead of being a closed system, like in disciplinary society, is free-floating, and it involves modulations. So you might think about, for instance, the fact that salaries in this society of control are regulated according to merit, right? So you don't have like a fixed sense of here's what this job pays, but you have a merit-based salary system. And in general, Deleuze thinks that corporations are a great metaphor even example of the society of control, because corporations are, as he puts it, sort of a spirit, a soul, a gas, right? A corporation is not encapsulated by its office space. This is even more obvious to us, right, in light of uh, pandemic or something The corporation is fundamentally different from the factory, which is a real concentrated place, and the factory is a space of discipline, associated with disciplinary society, whereas the corporation is a space of control, and, and kind of even an inchoate, right, free-floating space, if we can call it space at all. Instead of focusing on individuals and trying to fit them into the mold of what a citizen should look like, the society of control turns people into individuals, into sets of data that are to be used for different purposes. So there's this kind of dissolution of the individual or a splintering of the individual into individuals. Think about how much of your life is dependent on codes, passcodes, passwords, right, that mark your access to information. So when we were recording the episode on surveillance and I was thinking about this piece by Deleuze, I was also applying for global entry, um, which allows you to cut the passport control line when you're coming back to the U.S. from a foreign country. I needed to create a special passcode that marked my access to that information in order to get past passport control. And then I forgot the password, and there was no chance to rediscover the password. And so now, so now I don't even know if I can still use my global entry that I just applied for. Um, but that code right, should ideally mark my access to the information. In order to get that global entry, to begin with, I had to give over all sorts of information, and so I freely did this. So what happens in a society of control is often that individuals are giving access to their information in order that they can have uh, a free-floating orientation toward their society.